Hi everyone and welcome back. We are now looking at Luke 12 and uh, there's quite a few things in this chapter that we need to cover off but do read it, it's really interesting. Um, it starts off um, with this confrontation with uh, Jesus and the Pharisees again. This, it, Jesus seems to have a real problem with religious leaders that seem to be leading people astray. He doesn't like it and he keeps challenging the Pharisees and he's against basically hypocrisy saying you're better than someone else because you follow the rules and you're you're more holier than thou that type of stuff um what god actually honors is honesty that's very clear from this uh, this passage that god values the real you the honest you wants to get to know you wants you to be honest with him not put up front not perform for the crowds but just be honest and pure with who you are in front of people and he goes on uh, in verse 13, he starts talking about what motivates you. Are your motivations correct? Um, you know, because we can, we're surrounded by a world that says, you know, get this, get that. If you, you'll be a success if you achieve this or if you get this material wealth. But Jesus is challenging those ideas and saying, look, it's not material things that really matter. You're going to leave those behind. What really matters is the relationship with God that you have that can carry on past your worldly life into eternity. Choose that above everything else. Build your riches in the things of spiritual things, not of material things. God is a provider. And verse um, 22 it starts talking about how um, God will provide. If we let him, you know, he's, he provides for all the animals. Um, why, doesn't, why would we not expect him to provide for us? Start living our life in fear of not having enough. But in fact, actually turn that on, it, on your head, and, head and, and say, look, I'm going to be generous with what God has given me because I know that I can rely on him to give me more. He will provide. And I trust him enough to be generous to others who are in more need than I am. That is a, a symbol of what's going on internally in our hearts and about our trust in our God. Now, in verse 35, um, Jesus talks about living as, as if Christ was about to return. And I think that's really um, a challenge on our attitude to life. Do we see this life as temporary or do we see as this life as that's it, that's all there is? Because if we see this as temporary, that Jesus is returning, there is a future, it will change our attitude to things, it will change our behaviour, um, it will motivate us to live a life that is pleasing to our God, who we have to face, um, be judged by, and ultimately speaking, um, live eternity with. Now, if we have that in our minds, our whole goals in life, our whole attitudes in life, and our whole behaviour to the people around us and the things around us, will ultimately start falling into a pattern of God honouring, being honouring to God and loving him. Now, not everyone likes that idea. And Jesus ends this, or um, well, Luke sort of encapsulates Jesus' ideas and says, look, there's going to be conflict. And um, people are going to be against this whole concept of living for God, not for the moment. I don't want to give up my worldly wealth. I've, I've achieved this status. This is what who I am. But God is calling us to have a very different worldview. And although we may get kickback, although we may get prejudice, we may not always be accepted or understood. Hold fast. Stand your ground you're fighting to establish spiritual principles in a world that is spiritually blind that's going to be tough the whole deal of christianity is that yes um it's a real blessing but it's also quite hard at times and we need to stand strong and be strong in our faith so we can combat what's ahead of us we'll talk more tomorrow <laughs>